What's going on everyone? I have a unique video today. I wanna to show you how you can find publicly available construction plans and reports online and how you can walk through those and really start learning from them. I remember when I was an intern and you know, kind of once I started my career, there was a huge learning curve in reading construction plans. And I think what I've realized over the years is that this data is publicly available to all. And once you even start working for your company, there's a whole bunch of construction plans to review. So I also wanted to just take the time and kind of showcase what I'm looking at in a construction plan set. And we can just start identifying some things. And just as a disclaimer, this information is public. Anyone can access it. Now I am accessing Florida records. So this is Swift Mud, also known as Southwest Florida Water Management District. This is a district that you need to obtain ERPs, which is an environmental resource permit. Now I have not reviewed any of these plans. I'm just going to pull something random and let's see what we get. All right, so what you can do is actually type in Swift Mud ERP map. I use this very, very often. And again, this is all Florida related. This is Swift Mud, but construction plans are pretty typical throughout the industry. So this is just a good little way to review plans and get familiar with how things are built. I'm gonna go up here to ERP mapping application. Do not know where we are in space here. I'm just gonna go to somewhere random. I don't even know where it has me. It probably has me, uh, looks like somewhere in Tampa. So all these green little boxes represent uh, an ERP, which is an environmental resource permit. I'm gonna have to block some information out of here. All right, so once you make it to this website, you'll see a whole bunch of public documents. There's submitted as-built plans. There's general correspondence. And usually what I like to look for is the most recent permitted plans. So here we have the most recent permitted plans. You also have a permit there. So let's go to permitted plans and let's download these and let's see what we got. All right, so let's go through this. Here we have construction plans for Caldero subdivisions pod B and C, 482 residential lots. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is really just notice how on the cover sheet, you have a project map, location map, and a sheet index. I mean, that's one of the most important things here. It, it helps the reviewers and other people know where is this project even located? And you know, like what are you building here? So let's zoom into this little project map. You have what looks like pods B and C. So it looks like it's an extension of an already existing neighborhood. I'm assuming pod A was probably already built. It looks like you have this future development over here. And you can always tell when things are proposed, typically when it's bold. So all of this is existing or future because it's shaded out. What else do we got over here? We also have a sheet index. I'm gonna be using this a lot to understand uh, what sheets to go to first. And I'm not gonna go through all the sheets today. That would make for a very long video. But if you do have certain sheets or certain plans that you want me to go through, comment below and I will gladly be able to walk through it. I think where I want my focus is the existing conditions, and I think I want to look at some drainage plans. That's uh, that's always popular amongst all of you guys. So existing conditions, and hopefully there's some basins. Okay, perfect. So the first kind of thing that I'm looking for is really just the, the project area. So usually there's some sort of legend. Okay, this legend doesn't really tell me much. Looks like there's some flood zones and some silt fence. Site falls within a watershed district. That's really important, at least for, you know, developments that we do in Florida. There's always some sort of watershed district that you have to be cautious of, and you have to make sure that you're getting all of these basins into your plan because you're going to have to cookie cut all those basins once you do your proposed development. So let's actually take a look at some of these basins that we're looking at here. So I can tell that these red lines are the basins and even though it doesn't really label it anywhere, I wish, you know, a little critique of these plans. I wish the legend or something had it. I don't even see a leader. Uh, I guess I do see a leader here. Let's take a look at one of these. So basically what a basin is saying is that any droplet of water within this little red line here, water's going to travel to the storage, the storage unit of, of this node. These can be ponds, wetlands, or just depressional areas. Let's zoom in and see if we can even find any contour labels. Uh, that's another thing. I wish these had contour labels. I'm not really seeing anything, so it's kind of hard to tell. I mean, just, just from my knowledge, without even having contour labels, I can tell that this is a depression because this is representative as the basin. That means water is all flowing towards some sort of central location or wherever the contours are taking it to the lowest point. So I would think that this would be depression.
Sill fence is really, really important when you're doing existing conditions and demo sheets. God, I could do a whole YouTube video on that. I mean, you're basically telling the contractor where they can and can't develop. So it's a really big thing. I'll make sure to do a video sometime about it. I think it's time to head to the grading sheets, but uh, I already forgot what sheet. So you can always use the sheet index as a tool. So I wanna go to the master drainage plan. So C49, it looks like we have a master drainage plan on C. 49. I don't mean to critique these plans, but I'm just, I'm really used to seeing all of the stormwater infrastructure, like where the control structures are going, where the pipes are going. Cause right here, it's, it's really hard to understand, you know, which pond goes to where. I think a really solid master plan always has this type of data. So let's look at this little pond. We have this post PH3-5. So this is just a node in your little hydraulic model. And this node is representative of this basin. So like I said in the beginning, where water falls within this basin, it wants to travel to the local stormwater infrastructure and then make its way into the pond. So all of this cul-de-sac is being collected into this pond. And then there's some sort of low point like right here, I can tell by these contours, by all these contours, some sort of low points like right there. Let's see what else we got. It's really kind of it. I mean, so this pond's huge and it has a very, very large basin. It's almost like the entire project up here. So everything is almost being collected into this pond. If I had to guess, I mean, I'm probably assuming this pond. Uh, actually, I don't. I don't want to make any guesses. I don't know where this water goes, guys. Again, with master plans, I'm used to seeing some drainage infrastructure. I don't know if this pond goes to there or goes to there. I guess we'll find out in some of these later plans. All right, here's one of the first sheets. And this is a good little uh, key map. So I, I like this. I like seeing the key map. It'll tell you which sheet has all of the different areas of your project. Let's kind of see what we got going on here. I like looking at the legend because everyone does plans differently. So we have storm structure number, storm pipe, existing storm pipe. And then for all these, you'll have these lot numbers in the lot grading type, finished floor and pad. And that's so typical. You typically always need to show this with residential plans. Now what a lot grading A means is if you've watched any of my previous videos, lot A grading is when the high point is in the back of the lot and it drains towards the front of the lot. Whereas a type B lot, the drainage point is right at the middle. The very highest point is at the middle. So here we have this drainage pond and you can see the proposed contours. It looks like we're grading from an elevation of 48 down to 44. And I believe that might be the normal water. I do not know. These plans don't really show very much detail. Um, again, not to rag on these plans, but I'd, I'd like to see out of these plans what the top of bank is, what the normal water level is, what the design high waters are, it helps. Because if I'm reviewing all of these lot grades in these FFEs, I want to be able to know what the design high waters are. That's what you're always designing from. So let's study a few lots here. So they call these a D lot, and I've never actually heard of a D lot. But what it looks like is that your high point is right here at the front, the very like front of the, of the house. And it looks like it grades 1% that way, 1% that way, and then a few percents that way. I can tell that they're using AutoCAD Civil 3D. They got these nice little labels, these automatic labels that tell you what these grades are. Really interesting. Not everyone uses AutoCAD Civil 3D. Some people just grade by hand. So this is sloping 1% and then 5%. So so yeah, that these little sub basins, right? We have like pretty much a sub basin all throughout this front lot. Water draining into the road and then we got water draining all the way back into this pond. Then it looks like we have some storm structures right here. Can't really see it. Maybe we can see it on the other page. Let's see what's going on here. So we have some sort of storm pipe ST-352. It looks like they had to make some sort of sump area. And I'm assuming that they had to do this because this pipe is lower than what the proposed grade is. So it looks like there may have been a proposed grade of 42, but this pipe is under that elevation, that pipe invert. So they legit have to dig further and grade to that elevation. Let's see if we can find another page. Do they put anywhere about design high waters? I guess not. Uh, I guess there's some sort of like table or something that I'm missing. It's probably in the, the cross section. So maybe we'll have to go look at the cross sections here because I'm not even seeing any storm information. I don't know what this rim elevation is. I don't know what the invert. So it's kind of hard to track uh, where, where things are going. And I will say, I mean, you know, with these plans, again, it's not to, not to critique. I'm only analyzing these plans, but to make it easy, 
easy on reviewers, engineers, and contractors. I mean, look, a contractor is going to look at this set of plans and go like, okay, well, what is that rim elevation? Well, now I got to go to a whole different sheet. So now let's actually see if they have any of this information anywhere. Maybe grading and drainage details, C80. Oh, drainage structure and pipe chart, C61. All right, let's look for C61. All right, C61, found it. Man, I don't... I don't love this. Now I will say the benefit of using a drainage structure pipe data table is it makes you an organized table like this. I'm trying to think of any other positives. I just think it makes it harder to review because now if I'm going to review a set of plans, I have to print this out somewhere and then I have to review it on the plan view when you could have just had this information within the plan view. But I get it. Sometimes you run out of space and sometimes you want a really close up scale. And when you do that, you know, you start covering your labels with other really important information like grades or the FFE call out. So those types of things can happen. But man, I really wish I would have found a set of plans so I can walk through real elevations and all that stuff. So I kind of wanted to look at this roundabout. So it looks like they had a roundabout going here. This is very typical with uh, roundabouts. You, you have your own grading plan for the roundabout, especially because you have to make sure that all this is, is draining the right way. It's very important that you're getting water out of these streets here and that they're grading to the nearest low point and the nearest drainage structure. You're usually sloping anywhere between two to 3%. So 5668, 5619. I mean, shoot, that's almost, almost half a foot across there. Now, what are all these? So this is a center line or this is an alignment in AutoCAD. So that alignment is how the profiles are going to be built from. And notice how we have some station labels here. We got the point of curvature right there at 2986.22. So that lets the surveyor know where to stake these certain points out in the field. That way the contractor can go out there and build it. Let's see what else we got. I think this is interesting. It appears that they have all the intersections graded out and labeled, which is just, you can always capture these just in your grading plan set, just your normal grading sheets, but it looks like they have their own little separate intersection grading, which is pretty cool. I think what some people get mixed up here with intersections is that they forget to grade from this high point here, 2% cross slope, because this is a road. Every road has some sort of cross slope, cross slope of 2%, but then you have your longitudinal slope from this point down to whatever point is along your road. I think people forget all the time about this 2%. And if you, you're not really know what I'm talking about, I, I can make a whole video about this. Just with anything that you're unsure of, feel free to comment below. I'm always happy to dive in more into the details and maybe we can make a separate video. Last but not least, I think I just wanna walk through some preliminary plat sheets. I noticed that there's some preliminary plat sheets in here and basically a preliminary plat is really just subdividing all of the pieces of land before it becomes an actual final plat. So what is a plat in the first place? A plat is just a detailed map of how land is subdivided. So in this case, a lot of home builders or developers like to plat residential neighborhoods so they can actually sell individual parcels. Because if you think about it, if I'm developing this whole subdivision, I want to be able to sell this parcel to someone. So that's why you would need some sort of plat. And a plat usually has all of the lengths of each of these lot widths, the lot lengths, all of the curves, all of the easements that need to be shown. It looks like there's a 10 foot retaining wall and grading easement. That's for either, you know, the county or the HOA, whoever's going to own and maintain this portion of area. There has to be some sort of easement to give right to the people to maintain these areas. I wanted to keep this short and sweet, guys. I hope you learned something new. I thought this would be a a cool little thing to do definitely to just show you how to obtain public documents for construction plans and reports maybe this is, can just be part one and i can do another part two some other time and i can dig up maybe a drainage report and start looking at some node maps because i know a lot of you guys are interested in stormwater if you have any ideas for me or if you want to learn anything new just comment below and i will see you in the next video peace out